Hey, it's some old guy coding, and welcome back. Today we're going to take a little bit deeper look into the Williams Pinbot Pinball Machine. If you've never gotten to play with a pinball machine, take it apart and look inside. This thing pulls up right here, and the whole play field flips forward like that uh, for work. There's a little stand here, uh, at least there used to be, right there there is. And uh, let's see, there's a little hole over there where it's supposed to go. I'm not sure that I'm in it, so I'm not going to let go, but that way you can uh, work on the parts down here and still get to the play field. But if you really have to work on on the board, you can actually, and, and there goes the pinball, you can actually flip it all the way over here, or even invert it if you have to, uh, to work on, uh, on uh, uh, the mechanics or the electronics underneath here. And quite a bit of stuff on there. Uh, is going on of course. We have uh, the solenoids for the kickers and for the bumpers and and switches for detection of where the ball's at and of course over here we have the drop, tar drop target controller nice and neatly wired, hand wired good old days. There's the uh, solenoid it's for the uh, flippers and that's the uh, uh, ball eject if it falls down and once you once it drains it drops into a little pocket here and I guess detected and that kicks it back over to the shooter area the plunger area and as I said before in the bottom there just isn't a heck of a lot there let me zoom out a little bit we can get a little closer even I mean, really, the only thing down here is the power transformer, a speaker for the music, and uh, let's go handheld for a second. And this thing has a nice little area, a uh, little service unit here, which has the fuse in it there, and it's actually got an outlet for if you got a soldering iron or something, you know, you need to do some soldering work in here. Uh, how convenient is that? So there's the uh, serial number and information for this machine. And of course we can take a look at the uh, coin acceptor or coin rejector <laughs> if you uh, choose to consider it. There's that there. And this item down here is uh, actually the power switch on the bottom. So there's a push button switch underneath the table here. And that's pretty much all there is underneath the board there on the bottom of the machine. Let's take a look at this side. So this thing here is uh, one of the tilt mechanisms. That's where the weight screws onto the bottom here. So if you get things swinging too much, the, the wire shorts out to the to the ring there and tilts the machine. Also, if you try to lift the machine up, and apparently it's not in here anymore, but there should be a there should be a ball, there should be a pinball in here that will uh, is sort of inclined so that if it detects you lifting the machine up, it will uh, tilt the machine again. I think that's the volume control, if I'm not mistaken. We certainly have some interesting uh, electronics back here. Electromechanical stuff. The light sockets are pretty simply made. They're quite basic. If you can see, there's a red um, Red uh, shield of the play field up there, red translucent uh, piece of plastic on the play field there. And just uh, very basic sockets. That's the special light right here. And these are the side bumpers, solenoids for the side bumpers. And uh, it's a little difficult to see here, but these are, uh, there it is. Uh, it's difficult to see, but those are um, the switches that go up to the rubber bouncing um, sides there. I think they, they used to be called jets um, on some machines. And uh, those are you things that you could tweak with that tool we looked at earlier to control how sensitive um, that area was. The lamps are all matrixed, so that's probably why you're seeing um, 
diodes going across the uh, the lights here. There's one of those uh, resistor boards, probably with a couple replaced resistors there. And some more contacts and switches. This is the uh, drop target assembly. And uh, it's raised by the solenoid in here. Which uh, looks to currently not be attached to anything or even have the solenoid in it. So we're going to have to figure that guy out. That's part of the metal part that uh, I needed to replace. Aluminum part that had broken over time. And this area in the middle is the uh, uh, middle of the uh, field matrix where you're hitting buttons on um, this side or that side rather and back here on this drop target. It's hard to see in there but this black metal piece is the item that slides up. It's got this little uh, geared timer motor that uh, at the appropriate time will, will tell it to move up or move down. And a bunch more solenoids to uh, deal with kickers and uh, holes that uh, things drop into and they need to be kicked out of. Pretty cool stuff. That was inspected by Mr. Massus. And uh, I don't know if we can see anything on that sheet there. Inspection list. Pretty cool. So if we take a look back here, uh, as we did early in the opening shot, there's uh, just a bunch of these wiring harnesses that uh, go up to the back panel and that's where the computer is at. So let's take a look at that now. So the game is set up to uh, allow up to four different players and then it has this uh, display down here that manages the balls, the replays, and, and the match. And as you can see here, here's one of those uh, light baffles like we saw underneath there. It probably, uh, the other one probably belonged over here someplace, I'm not sure. But we could certainly try to get that guy back on there. So behind here is the computer and the electronics that uh, are the brains of the system. Let me see if I can figure out how to get this guy open again. I can't, oh, here it is. There we go. Chock full of fun. Look at that. Zoom out a little bit here. So we've got several different boards in the system. The one on the lower right, I believe, is the power supply board. Uh, this is the main computer board, the processor board, and I'm not sure what the other two are up there. Maybe that's part of the power supply too. I'm not sure. And then on the back of the front panel here, of course, we have the uh, connecting cables and, and light switches and uh, another set of the power resistors here. Probably, uh, I'm not sure what that's for, a resistor, a light set or something maybe. But uh, let's see if we can zoom in and see the processor on there. We got a Yamaha chip on there. I think that's probably the sound uh, chip. So that's probably the soundboard we're looking at up on top there. So let's move on down to the to the processor card here. There we go. It's hiding behind that wire there. Yep, there we have it. It's a 6802. Motorola part, look at that. Motorola processor, and I'm sure it's the rest of the chipset sitting around it out here. Very cool stuff. And there's the uh, ROMs, of course. And I believe this down here might have had something to do with the matrix, uh, the light matrix. I know I replaced a couple of transistors in that area. I don't remember exactly now, but uh, 
there were some issues with this machine, of course, when the, when it arrived. And uh, on this machine, up a little more. There we go. The free uh, the free game. If you get to the free game score, is uh, there's always a kicker in there someplace, and that's the solenoid that knocks up against the top of the cabinet. There goes thunk. So you know that you uh, got a free game. Take a look at some of the wiring on the back of the front panel here. All the wires are just soldered and just bare wires soldered and run to the next one. Quite interesting. Just a regular railroad track going back there. And then at the very top of the machine, we got the flashy uh, roller lights up there that uh, flash uh, under a certain circumstance, which, of course, I can't remember what that was anymore. <laughs> so thanks for watching. Next time, we'll uh, give it the smoke test and apply power.